So Dream Textures is a Blender add-on you've absolutely heard of at this point. It basically gives you the power of AI, the power of stable diffusion right inside of Blender. And people have been using this to generate images, textures, all without going to Google Images and downloading stuff. And you can actually get original textures. Now, uh, this add-on that is already stupid powerful, lets you make any texture you want, just got a major update. It now uses depth models and you can project textures onto geometry in a way that makes sense. So I don't just want a image of a building. I want the texture of a building that goes on to the very specific building that I modeled. So we're going to talk about that. But first, I want to do a review of Dream Textures in case you don't uh, know what that is. And uh, before we do that, just a quick mention, this video is sponsored by Shortform. We're going to talk about them more later. So in case you are living under a rock, Stable Diffusion, the thing that lets you make AI art, there's an add-on that lets you do it in Blender. So Dream Textures, I have it installed 0.0.9 newest version, and it's going to need a Stable Diffusion model, right? Dream Textures runs it on Blender, but it needs a model to run. Um, so here you can see I have the newest 2.1 model, and more importantly, I have the depth model. This is what's going to be useful for the new feature. So um, I have two models, we can choose between them. Uh, key takeaway is we can generate textures here. So here I'm in the image editor, I'm going to use my 2.1 model, not yet using depth, that's the new feature. Uh, let's generate a custom prompt. And you can see I was already messing with this before I misspelled brick, but uh, let's do a custom prompt of a forest. Okay, something super simple. I don't want to go to Google Images and download this, I just want a forest. A lot of settings here, I'm just going to click generate. And you can see uh, from the noise, it pulls away a forest. Uh, it, not necessarily any specific forest, just a randomly generated one each time. So you can already see how this is useful. You can get more specific. So you could use this as concept photography or for textures. Uh, we can say forest in a winter. Okay, so now it's going to be a forest, but we are constraining it uh, to be kind of ones with snow, I'd imagine. So here's a winter forest. Looks super legit. Um, it's using the power of two point one. Uh, so this is the main thing people have been using it for. And anything that this model has trained on, so let's say we have Obama, and more specifically, we have a photography of Obama, it's a medium shot, or maybe it's a long shot. So it's going to be kind of full body, you can set all these settings, uh, you can get a certain type of photo. So it's just adding certain things to the prompt. So here you can see tried to do an American flag, it's not always going to give the best generations I've found, you have to be pretty specific. So here you can see Obama on the side. Uh, it's going to try to do its best. Sometimes you just want to generate a couple of these until you get a, a good generation. So here we have uh, what is clearly Obama. Okay. People have been using it to generate images. Also, people have been using it to generate texture. So you can make a seamless texture. Um, but one thing that this does not do necessarily is kind of respect which orientation we're looking at. So let's say I was just to type in pond and I was to do this as a generation, it's going to give us a pond, maybe some lily pads. And you can see the camera's kind of sitting above the pond. Uh, maybe there's some trees in the background, um, whatever. Okay. Uh, it doesn't necessarily care about this cube. Maybe this cube is something floating in the pond, N nothing like this, right? So the new feature is it's going to be the same image generation, but now it's going to respect depth. Okay, so let's try something simple. So again, this is still a bit glitchy. It's still, you know, ironing out the kinks. But what is a cube? A cube is a sugar cube, a Rubik's cube. It could be anything. So now if I go to the end menu, you can see we have dream textures inside of here. Model not supported. You want to make sure that you are using a depth model, whichever depth model you want. I want to generate a texture. I'm going to say it. this is a Rubik's cube. And uh, now to run this, instead of just running a image texture, it's going to apply this. Uh, what we need to do is we have to go into edit mode and select the faces that we want. So do I want it to be applied to all the faces? I'm going to select all the faces. And then from this perspective, I'm going to project a dream texture. So it's not just going to make a Rubik's cube. It's going to make one that makes sense in the concept of this cube. So let's see uh, what it gives us. Project dream texture. You can see it's diffusing out. And now we have, it's not perfect, but you can see it's a Rubik's cube kind of from the right perspective. And we can generate this again and again. And uh, if we go into the advanced parameters, we can get uh, more specific with this. Now, I don't know necessarily if the more geometry we add necessarily the better. 
Um, I imagine it would get rid of some uh, projection distortion and all of this. Uh, but you can see it's kind of respecting the mesh in a sense. It's still a bit glitchy, uh, but let me show you uh, what this thing can do. So maybe a super simple case of this is let's say we're making a tiny town. Uh, I'm going to make a kind of a grid that goes like this, and I'm going to call this a road. So make me a road uh, texture, okay? And it's going to be using our depth. So I'm going to kind of do this from top down. It matters which way we're looking at. So I'm going to, uh, it could be 512 by 512. I'm going to project texture. And now we have, well, I guess it doesn't really know what road. Does it need to be like a sidewalk? Does it need to be whatever? I'm just going to keep projecting until we get a road uh, that looks kind of like roady. So here we have a road. Next, I'm going to make some buildings. So this is some super fast concept art stuff. So I'm going to put one here make it tall. I'm going to make another building. So I'm going to put it off to the side here and make it short. Whoops, it looks like I messed up the geometry here. Let me just do that again. We have a cube, move it upwards right here. And uh, let me actually add in a few buildings just to add visual interest. So this and that. For these, I'm going to use a, uh, maybe, maybe just city buildings, something descriptive. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to generate a texture uh, with the depth and projection. And you can see it is now generating textures of buildings that are kind of projected from the right perspective. So this is a great way to uh, prototype and very quickly whip up uh, some results. So here you can see a perfect example of the buildings being projected from the right thing. Um, another example of maybe something that would kind of speed up your workflow is, um, let's say I had a, I wanted to model an air conditioner, but it was just kind of this tiny asset that didn't really matter what it looked like. So we have uh, this right here. Uh, maybe it has a divot in the middle. So I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to extrude these uh, two sides so they're kind of a bit taller. Um, and maybe we could do a inset here. So there's a lot of uh, depth and stuff going on here. Uh, maybe I could do an AC unit. We'll see if it knows what AC unit is. Maybe we need to explicitly say air conditioner. I'm going to project dream texture. And very quickly, we have an air conditioner unit. This was actually uh, a great example. If you want it to be a bit more precise, uh, what we can do is we can go into these advanced things. By the way, we can also bevel, kind of make it a bit smoother. Um, we can uh, increase the number of steps, so it's going to do it at a higher quality. You can increase the CFG scale. In other words, how much is it going to adhere to the prompt? Uh, what kind of sampling it's using. I like to use Euler Ancestral um, and a bunch of other settings. So let's project a dream texture. So again, it's not just making an air conditioning unit. It's making one uh, that makes sense from the direction that we're doing it from. So if I was to now do it from the back. So maybe, maybe like this texture made sense, but it didn't really work on the back. So what I can do is I can just select a couple of these faces and project another part of a dream texture. So you can uh, mix textures here and there. And now we have a very simple air conditioning unit. Does it look great? No. But when you're at this scale and it's just part of a building, is anybody going to notice? Also, no. Uh, let's try to do another example. So I'm looking around me, seeing what we have. Maybe we could try something a bit complicated, something with text. We'll see how it handles this. So I'm going to make a Coke can. So I'm going to add a bit of bevel. Not on the vertices. Whoa. Ho, whoa, ho. I want to bevel just on the top and bottom faces. So we're going to do a bit of a bevel here. We're going to do a bit of an inset, make kind of the can thing. Nothing super complicated. So I'm going to say soda can. We could try to specify Coca Cola. We'll see. Select all of these, project dream texture. And I'm excited to see if this works. There we go. All of a sudden, we have a soda can in a, a brand that never existed. So you can use this to kind of speed model things that are going to be in the background. Like when it's this small, that looks like a real asset. Uh, let's make another thing. I'm looking around me. Uh, maybe we want to make a pill bottle. Kind of a similar concept, but let's try it out. 
So I'm going to scale this here. I'm going to add a loop cut. I'm going to select these, extrude to kind of kind of make the cap of this. Extrude along normals, that is, if I can even get that right. And you could be as specific with this as you want. So I'm just going to do something like this. So we've speed modeled the thing. Let's try to do this. So we have pill bottle and we can uh, project a dream texture. So again, all of this is using the adept model. There we go. You can kind of tell it's a pill bottle. Maybe not the best generation. Uh, so I just run it a couple more times. I don't know if this allows you to do a batch um, thing. Let's do a, uh, I'm looking specifically for an orange pill bottle. So let's go for something like that. Kind of like the standard American pill bottle. It's definitely trying, but you can definitely tell that it's doing a, a pill bottle. So again, uh, all of this is subject to get better. Um, and I imagine, can we go into the UVs? So basically what it's doing is you can see here, it's generating the image and it's kind of projecting this correctly. What we can do is if it's not perfect, as it wasn't perfect before, we can kind of just shift this over until it looks good from that uh, perspective. So it's almost like doing a corner pin on uh, some of these. I'm excited to see what does the soda can look like? Yeah, generated a soda can that would make sense from uh, this perspective. Let's just do one more because I think it's fun. Uh, let's do a... I feel like we can do one that's very hard. I've tried this before and it didn't work, so I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't work again. I'm gonna go for a soccer ball. Maybe those are two words, because soccer ball might be a different entity in its eyes. Project dream texture. Again, if it doesn't line up perfectly, uh, we can always do another, eh, we can always do another uh, shift of the UVs. But you can see this is actually coming out quite nice. And uh, we have different kinds of soccer balls. So let's go back to the UV editing workspace. You can see it's done a bit of a stretch on this uh, soccer ball. I can go a bit larger on the x-axis. And there we have a soccer ball. If you wanted to clean this up, you'd now go to texture paint and kind of clean it up. But again, as a small asset, definitely looks like a soccer ball in the same way that this looks like a pill bottle when it's uh, super tiny. So there you go. Just wanted to mention that this now exists because uh, shit's getting crazy out here. So link in the description for you, you can download that and now uh, the sponsor of this video. So this tutorial has been brought to you and sponsored by Shortform. And if you haven't heard of Shortform, let me give you the summary, which is a good joke once you actually know what Shortform is. Basically, Shortform takes uh, some of the most famous books of all time, or at least the things that are going trending right now, nonfiction books, and it will give you the summary, the bullet points, and the explanation that you need to get out of the book. In other words, do you need to spend a month or a couple weeks at a time reading each individual book when the value of it comes from extracting the key pieces and say no uh, what short form is is you pick a book that you wanted to read or maybe you've already read it and you want to review what you've read and it will give you not only a summary of kind of the key points but analysis and kind of like the takeaway of a book three genres that it covers that you might be interested in is philosophy books do you want to know more about the world or how people see it uh, do you want to know more about biography how individuals have experienced life and what they've seen and do you also want want a career and success genre. Well, it covers all of these kind of like self, I mean, what I'm interested in is kind of like the self-help genre. And I feel like I just gave three things inside the self-help genre. One book that I actually started reading, but actually never finished. So short form is a great kind of substitute for what I was going to read is Atomic Habits. This is a book about how to optimize or like, how can we squeeze out 1%? What habits can we form to gain 1% kind of advantage in different points of your life? And then if you sum all those up, you're actually getting something somewhere. Um, short form has a summary of atomic habits that ironically, the, you'd think atomic habits would be a short book talking about atomicness, but uh, short form has been super helpful for me there. And since short form is uploading new summaries of books and articles that people care about every single week, it is never a bad time to start. So to get five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on your annual subscription, join short form through my special link. You should be seeing a link here or in the description. Uh, you just click that and get learning faster.